So, the preview for the second World Cup semi-final between, between Croatia and England. Uh, a game that to me is always reminiscent of Euro 2008 qualifying, as we will see shortly. But there's a lot more to it. So, uh, the game will be played at Luzhniki in Moscow, 11th of July at 9 o'clock in the evening Moscow time, 8 o'clock Central European time. And that's two in the afternoon on the East Coast in America. Current form. Uh, this is actually a very telling this time around. Croatia started very, very well in the tournament and had a uh, great start against Nigeria. It also had a wonderful performance against Argentina and even the Iceland game that I don't count fully. Uh, was a good performance. They got nine points from the group stage. And then it kind of got stuck a little bit. You had the draw against Denmark, which probably could have been expected somewhat. Everyone said Croatia is the more um, technically a better team. Uh, but yeah, uh, Denmark managed a draw and this was always to be expected. But um, the draw against Russia, that was a little bit more of a surprise. And you can see that the form curve is actually going down. At the moment, I have Croatia at an average form of around 60%. Uh, quite the opposite for England. Again, a decent start against low opposition, so you cannot really make a lot of points uh, right here. The loss against Belgium still counts heavily, or even, only, even though I only counted half. And then uh, Colombia, again, a draw with a draw. You never make much points, but Sweden, almost perfect performance. Um, given that, uh, yeah, they were favored. There were not too many goals, so making two goals against Sweden gives you a good form rating. And the form curve here is more showing, is more on the up, especially over the last three. Whereas for Croatia, it's definitely, there's a downward trend if I look at it. So here, down, here it goes up. So yeah, on if we go by form, England has the advantage. Let's look at accolades. Uh, and again, for Croatia, I do include a little bit of um, Yugoslavia. Oh, not a little bit. I do include Yugoslavia just to make give a fuller picture. Again, the Yugoslav squad was not entirely Croatian, but many uh, times there were enough Croatian players to, so that I feel comfortable uh, putting those together. I would not feel comfortable to count uh, Yugoslavia only for a Serbian record, for instance. So the World Cup, um, Croatia finished third in 98 as an, as an independent nation and as Yugoslavia they finished fourth in 62. England won it all in 66 and finished fourth in 1990. Uh, for such a big soccer nation I'm always amazed uh, how poor England is but then you also got to take into account that they didn't participate until 1950. And at that point, the continent and the rest of the world has actually caught up to the English. If the World Cup, would, if England would have already taken part in 1930, um, they probably would have some better results. But yeah, self-chosen isolation. And this is a part where I always had a problem with England, uh, personally. Um, continental championships, none for either of the teams, but uh, at least Yugoslavia finished second place. They reached the first final, but there were many big nations not present, very similar to the World Cup. Whereas uh, England reached twice the semi-final in 68 and in 96. Actually, um, I forgot here, Yugoslavia also finished second in 1968. Um, because I know that because they beat in the semi-final uh, England. So let's write it here, 19... Sixty-eight. That's entirely with the touchpad. So second also in 1968. Golden ball. England has a golden ball with Bobby Charlton. Golden boot. Davo Shuka was the highest scorer in France in 98 and Gary Lineker was in 1986. Uh, both all-time greats. Shuka is now a very contentious president of the Croatian FA and Gary Lineker is a television host and actually quite a successful one that he even hosted a draw for this year's World Cup. So, previous competitive matches and we can draw a big line actually right here. 
uh, where we have the line between Croatia and Yugoslavia. Let's draw it here. I'm drawing through the flags, but don't mind. So as I said, we have the Euro semifinal in Florence, which is the um, one of two uh, uh, finals tournament um, between the two that Yugoslavia won one nothing. Then in uh, qualifying for Euro 88, uh, England beat Yugoslavia twice, London 2 nothing, and then a very convincing 4-1 in Belgrade, uh, which I find is a very impressive result, although maybe the Yugoslav team at the time was not as great. And then there was no meeting between uh, any nations that are tied to Croatia up until Euro 2004, the last group game where England won 4-2. And this is actually um, kind of sets the tone. Uh, in the semi-final they lost, but most of the time they were actually quite clear victories. However, uh, this is the biggie here in Zagreb for Euro 2008 qualifying. This was a 2-0 win for uh, Croatia, where um, there was the big goalkeeping mistake. I think it was a Neville own goal. He made a back pass to the goalkeeper. The ball wobbled over the pitch and the goalkeeper wanted to shoot it away. Missed it because the ball jumped, I think, over his leg and it went straight in, in, into goal. It's a horrible goal uh, for a goalkeeper to get, but if you look at it closer, the, um, it was such bad pitch conditions. It's hard to blame, but it's kind of synonymous with English goalkeeping post Gordon Banks, probably Peter Shilton. And then England still could have qualified if they get a draw against Croatia, but no, Croatia wins in London. And those two games for me is what I remember most about uh, England versus Croatia. These were such, this was such a stunner that England did not qualify for Euro 2008 at the expense of Croatia and Russia. Um, that those are the ones that stick in mind and it's kind of, yeah, the, um, Croatia is this uh, very nasty opponent for England. But no. They actually, in the next qualifying campaign, just two years later, against um, for World Cup 2010, England won 4 1 in Zagreb, and this is a mistake. They also won 5 1 in London. 5 1 in London. So, uh, very, very clear results. This was the first year under Fabio Capello, um, where, yeah. They looked like world beaters and then it all fell apart at the World Cup. I th uh, still one of the stranger things that I saw um, in my uh, time as a soccer fan, that England just fell apart ahead of, uh, at the World Cup in 2010. So yeah, well, uh, to summarize, there are two victories for Croatia in, as an independent nation were relatively close. Three relatively clear results. Um, in favor of England and when it was Yugoslavia there's also one semi-final where they lost and the rest very clear results so um, the oral history bears out for England. Lastly let's go to the semi-final record. Um, Croatia has two top four finishes as Yugoslavia and two as Croatia 30, 62, 98 and 2018. Um, so the three semi-finals were of course in uh, against Uruguay where the, the first World Cup where they lost 6-1 then against uh, Czechoslovakia in 96-2 where they lost 1-3 and then the one the, uh, we already mentioned that result. Uh, let me go back um, in previously when uh, France actually beat uh, Croatia in the semi-final. I talk a lot about this in the video uh, when I talk about France's semi-final record. England on the other hand has only three top eight finishes including this year. 1966, they beat at home soil uh, Portugal and 2-1. Uh, two goals by Bobby Charlton, one by Eusebio. And in 1990, they lost a penalty shootout to Germany in a nail biter. And everyone remembers Gaza's tears. This is my daughter knocking. Uh, I'm going to finish the video anyway. Now, um, Croatia and England, I already said that I'm... Uh, expecting Croatia to play in the dark and I still have a feeling that England will play in the red jerseys. I Maybe they consider this as, as the lucky jerseys. I watched yesterday a few videos between Croatia and England matchups and it was always the blue against the white. So there might be a chance for the all white but I have a certain feeling that it will be all red.
don't ask me why I might very well be wrong with it I have ingot favored at 56 percent uh, not 29 percent chance of overtime well I hope this gave you some info sorry for again a few mistakes in there uh, I don't know why I keep making those but you know I prepare those uh, rather quickly maybe that's why hope you enjoyed this and I will talk to you soon if you enjoyed this video please hit like and subscribe to my channel if you've already done so I would like to thank you for your support it is very much appreciated also check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video thank you for watching and until next time